underline the real cost to workers over the long run. And we've taken a straightforward approach. As our posters suggest, the average worker would be £38 a week worse off by 2030 if we leave. That's £38 a week. Let's just put that in perspective. It's a day out with the kids, help with the weekly shop, the cost of filling up the tank of the small car. Now, £38 a week may not be much for business leaders and politicians, certainly not for Boris Johnson, a man who once described his £250,000 fee for a weekly newspaper column as chicken feed. But for millions of workers, it's the difference between eating or eating, struggling or saving, between getting on or getting fired. As trade unionists know only too well, workers are still reeling from the crash. On average, they're still £40 a week worse off than before the financial crisis, struggling with debt, spiralling housing costs, and growing insecurity at work. And that's why Brexit is a gamble that we can't afford. Leaving the EU would hit trade, investment, and demand. That would hit productivity, and that would hit workers' wages. If the impact on our pay would be bad, then the outlook for jobs could be even worse. Last week, the Chancellor said thousands of jobs would go over the next two years if we leave the EU. Now, I'm not the Chancellor's biggest fan, and I think it's pretty hard to put an exact figure on the scale of job losses, but what's absolutely clear is that jobs would go. And not just any old jobs, we'd be losing high pay, high skill, high productivity jobs. Manufacturing jobs that pay £100 a week more than their service sector equivalents. Good jobs in the regions that need the most outside of London. Put simply, that would mean fewer jobs in Cowley and more in the likes of Sports Direct. Remember, half of all our manufacturing exports go to the EU. The majority of our largest trading partners are in the EU, and half of foreign direct investment depends on the EU. So our manufacturing sector, already battered and bruised by the recession, would be hit hard, and inequalities between regions would get even worse. That's why unions in leading firms like Airbus UK, BMW Mini and Ford have come out so strongly against Brexit. Good jobs in Britain today depend on being part of the EU. It gives us access to 500, mi a 500 million strong single markets. Why would a company invest in plants here if we corrupt? The evidence is clear. We should vote to stay in the EU for more jobs, for better jobs, and for higher pay. And there's another compelling reason to vote to the name, rights of work. Let me be clear, the EU is not some kind of lady bounty for bestowing rights from on high. Unions across Europe joined forces to fight for the rights that the EU guarantees. These rights make everybody's life better, and they are the foundation that our union agreements build on. Pregnant women having the right to pay time off for medical appointments, the right to time off to look after a child who's ill. Tougher health and safety rules, which quite literally can be the difference between life and death. Equal treatment for part-timers, tenants and agency workers, decency and dignity rather than insecurity. And of course, paid holidays too, worth a thousand pounds a year to somebody on the minimum wage. These rights don't just make a difference to workers, they prevent a race to the bottom. Brexit would put all of these rights and protections at risk. The UK government would get to pick and choose which rights to keep. The Brexiteer, Priti Patel, has already told the Institute of Directors that leaving the EU means the government could cut these regulations by half. Lots of Brexiteers have long wanted to exempt small businesses from rules protecting their staff. So that's 12 million workers' rights up for grabs to start with. We know that the government doesn't like the working time directive that limits working hours. And we know that the government wants to weaken agency workers' rights. And Brexit would give them their chance. One thing's for sure, once you start reducing some people's rights and protections, everyone loses. Bad bosses take advantage, there's pressure on others to follow suit, 
and we end up in the race to the bottom. Less holiday pay, fewer rights for working mums and dads, and more dangerous workplaces. And that's why I'm here today to warn working people that this is what's on the ballot paper. Their wages, their jobs, and their rights at work. I'll finish on this. The EU is far from perfect, but I have no doubt that Britain's workers are better off in the EU and best off in a reformed EU. I don't mean David Cameron's version of reform, instead I mean reform to rebuild a fair area for workers and citizens, with real investment in infrastructure to boost growth, the priority of creating good jobs and fair pay and a new deal for young people. But just 22 days from now, working people have a choice, as we will make the most important political decision of our lifetimes for us and our children. So on the 23rd of June, I urge workers to vote Remain. Thank you very much. And I'd now like to hand over to Chris Bond, who is the convener at BMW Housing. Well, thank you, Francis. Um, uh, my name is Chris Bond. I've worked at Cowley Car Plant in Oxford for the past 40 years, where we produce the world famous Mini. The factory has had its ups and downs over the years and almost sh shut on several occasions. However, since BMW took ownership in 2000, we have seen serious investment in the plant, investment in the latest equipment, and real investment in workforce training. This investment has benefited old and young alike. Cowley now employs more than 160 apprentices a year. These are quality apprenticeships with a proper job at the end. As you can imagine, they are in great demand, both locally and across the UK. So what would happen to places like Cowley if we left the EU? BMW have made it very clear that they want us to remain. And I don't think for one second that if the UK votes to leave, the company would up sticks overnight. That's not how BMW does its business. However, Cowley's future will become a lot more uncertain. Once we finish production of the new Mini in 2020, things could change very quickly. Minis are not just built in the UK. BMW has a base in Austria and recently acquired a new factory in Holland to build the new two-door. If we leave, the company may well decide that it makes better economic sense to move production to the European mainland, especially if it has to start paying tariffs on UK exports. Now I know this is all ifs and buts, and it is only my opinion and not that of BMW. But as a representative of workers, as a convener of the biggest employer in the South East, outside of Gatwick, I have to ask the question, can we really afford to take that gamble? Can we really afford to put the livelihoods of the 4,500 working at Cowley at risk? And it wouldn't only be jobs in Oxford that would be affected. We have an engine plant in Hamsall, Birmingham, and a pressing plant in nearby Swindon. We need to be clear on this. If we leave the EU, the whole of the UK automotive sector could be under threat. And with it, thousands of jobs in our supply chain. As workers, we have gained so much from being part of the European Union. From better working hours and holidays to maternity pay. And here at Oxford, one thing that has been very relevant is the EU's agency directive. Before the directive came in, agency workers were paid 20% less than a poor BMW worker for doing the exact same job. Thanks to that one EU directive, more than a thousand agency workers at BMW Cowley now enjoy the same pay and conditions as a BMW permanent staff. If we were to leave, I fear that our working conditions would worsen, especially for the likes of the agency workers. Europe is not perfect by any means, but we cannot change it if we're on the outside looking in. 